Hello guys, welcome back to another video on my channel. Now today I'm doing my all-time Luton Town 11. Now all players which I mentioned in this video are from the year 2013. Now in my last video I mentioned if we hit 25 likes I will upload this video on Monday. Well you guys smashed it so I'm going to up it. If we hit 30 likes on this video this week I will upload my top 10 away games which I've been to. So if you guys hit that I will upload another video. But anyway, guys, thank you for all the support on my channel recently, and on with the video. So, starting off in goal, we are going with Mark Tyler. Mark Tyler, for me, is an amazing shot uh, stopper, fantastic experienced goalkeeper, which we have not really done well in the goalkeeper department since he's left. You know, Walton is like the other goalkeeper to come close to him, in my personal opinion. But apart from that, we've been, we've, we have struggled in goalkeepers. And hopefully Slugar will improve and get better in the future and change everyone's opinions. But at this moment in time, Mark Tyler is my all-time goalkeeper. At right back, we have Jack Stacey. For me, Jack Stacey was very good and suited the way Nathan Jones started football. He was able to bomb up and down that right, that right wing. Very attacking player, really good at crossing. He got a couple of goals in him. He also could defend as well. And what I did like about um, Jack Stacey was he was able to cope with a winger and a fullback from the other team attacking him. So even though he had no cover, or sometimes he did have cover, he was still able to deal with the, the quality of the other team if they wanted to bomb down that wing. So for me, Jack Stacey was a really good player and obviously helped us win back-to-back -back promotions and is playing in the Premier League with Bournemouth. At centre-back, we have Steve McNulty. I love Steve McNulty. I thought his leadership on the pitch was so clear and obvious. Yes, his size was a massive factor. He got outpaced by a lot of quick strikers. Uh, he had a football brain, you know. He, he was in the right place at the right time, you know, right positioning. Maybe if he lost all the weight and sorted his body, his physique out, he could have played out a lot higher. I'm actually pretty confident he would have played out a lot higher if he did sort that out. But that's who he was, you know. And you can't knock him for that. And despite his size and despite... And what people say about him, he's got over five promotions in his whole career. And he did fantastic for us, I felt. He just wasn't capable of taking that next step up to League One. And obviously, he left us at the time to go up north for family reasons. So, for me, he was a fantastic centre-half. Wish he stayed longer. I wish we had him a lot longer as well. And I will always remember that goal against Southport at home. Looking at Steve McNulty's partner, I would have to say Matty Pearson. Now, I was very close in picking Luke Wilkinson. Now, the reason why I say that is because Luke Wilkinson was a goal-scoring centre-half. He got his head on every corner and, and free kick as well. And I believe under better players, he would have scored a lot more from corners and set-pieces. Now, Wilkinson, he didn't suit Nathan Jones' style of play, and that's why he left. Maybe he didn't get given the opportunity to show he can change his style of play. But he ended up getting replaced by Alan Sheehan. But I was a really big fan of Wilkinson. He was a great player. But for me, Pearson just, only just though for me, gets above Wilkinson. Yes, Matty Pearson is a better player. But I'm talking about players which I really enjoyed watching. And Wilkinson was a player who I really did enjoy watching. In at left back, we have Academy graduate James Justin. James Justin obviously came through the ranks at Luton, a player who could play right back, left back, centre mid, a great player and he's going to have a great future. That's why he's at Leicester, he's at a team which is going to develop him even better than what he already is. Just like Jack Stacey, he just knew how to go up and down the wing, he knew how to defend, he knew how to cope with two, like two on one situations. He was a very good player and I hope he plays for England one day because he's such a good left back. Going into the midfield now, this is extremely tough for me, but we're going to start off with my all-time favourite player and that is Paddy Ruddock. Been with us since the conference days, I fell in love with Paddy in the conference days. That goal at Dartford I will always remember, fantastic goal it was and Pelly has adjusted, adapted, got better since then, you know. He's played in four divisions, got three promotions. He's a Luton Town legend, and I really hope he can play in the Prem one day. But who knows, with us, will he be with us? I don't know, but I really hope he does. 
And yeah, he, for me, Pelly is a box to box midfielder. He can score a cracker in him. He can defend. He can play in multiple positions as well. I just love Pelly. I just think he's a great player. So in the field with Pelly Roddick, I'm going to go with Glenn Ray. For me, Glenn Ray is a leader. He's so good sitting in front of the back four. He protects the back four very well. Very clever. I do reckon he will improve and get better as well. Since coming back from injury in the championship, he's literally performed really, like, really, really well. And I do reckon... He'll keep performing. He, he's such a good player. I do reckon he should be the captain of Luton. I think he has that leadership skills. Great tackler. He's never afraid to put a foot in. So, for me, Ray in front of the back four with Pelly just in front of him is a really good midfield so far. Looking to fill that last midfield position, it's between Gutridge and Cameron McGinn. Both players did the same thing. They both scored goals at the right time, you know, in a game. Um, they arrived late, they got into the right areas to score those goals. They were both fantastic players, both had really good quality. Um, Gutridge, his career was like cut short because of injuries and he had to go leave Luton. Um, I wish we had him like a few years younger. Cameron McGeehan, a younger version of Gutridge. Um, I do reckon Cameron will continue to do well. Um, he's on loan at Portsmouth at the moment, he hasn't really cut it in the championship. But he gets goals. Karen McGinn, he, he knows how to get goals, he's a goal scoring midfielder and for that I think I have to put Karen McGinn in, he can also play deeper as well which is good to have, so for me Karen McGinn occupies that last midfield spot. Now going into the attack I've got plenty of options as we've had some great strikers since 2013 but the three strikers which I'm going to go with, well the three attacking players I'm going to go with are Danny Hilton, James Collins and Andre Gray. Now, Andre Gray, I was a massive fan of. I only got to see him for one season, but he banged in goals for fun. You know, strength, pace, and power. Defenders struggle at any level, struggle to handle with that, like those three elements. You know, yes, Andre Gray is at Watford. Not ideal, but for me, he smashed it. And he after Luton, he went on to smash it at Brentford and Burnley, but unfortunately, He's not really doing too well now, but I still I would take him back. It, and I don't I wouldn't normally say that, but he's the one player I would take back to Luton. The other two strikers, obviously Danny Hilton. I've had some so many great moments with Danny. He's a player which gets in the heads of other like defenders. He winds them up, gets goals as well, and he, he's such a great player, Danny Hilton. He's such a fan favourite. Collins, natural striker, doesn't like need many chances to score. And that's how good Collins was. And that's why Collins is in my team. He's had a really good goal record. He stepped up to the championship really well. And yeah, those three are my attacking options. Now, if I had to pick a manager to manage this group of players. Now, yes, Nathan Jones would be the ideal guy. And yes, I know we've got bad history with Nathan Jones after he like after him leaving, but we can't forget on what he's actually done for the club. You know, he won us um, promotion from League Two to League One. He set up foundations for us to get promoted to the Championship. So for that, and with the style of attacking play which we were playing under Nathan Jones, I would have to say um, Nathan Jones as my manager, uh, my all-time manager so far. Would a 4-3-3 formation work under Nathan Jones? Who knows? But that would be my formation, which I would play in my all-time 11. So, guys, hopefully you did enjoy the video. Um, and comment down below your all-time Luton Town 11. I know there's be fans from all different age groups having their opinions on their all-time 11. So let me know down in the comment section of this video your all-time 11. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Follow me across all my social media if you haven't done already. And I'll see you guys in the next video.